Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we have kind of some mini reviews on new items, updates on older products, and uh, answered questions from viewers. So kind of a whole bunch of things. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off first with a question from a viewer and that was about the refer vanity units. So about using these, the slotted holder in particular, vertically. So I have the slotted holder that it has the varying lengths. They also have one that all has the same, same length of the dividers. So I don't have that one, but yes, you can use these vertically. The only thing, you know, like it, none of the things I have in here seem to be like too heavy. You know, nothing seems to like be bending or weakening or anything like that with it. But I mean, it could potentially happen over time, I would think. So just something to note, not to put like something super heavy on there, but that would be true of any of these like vertical types of organizers that don't have like another vertical or horizontal, depending which way you look at it, but another uh, section here to kind of allow this to have additional support on the end, if that makes sense. So yes, you can use these vertically. Um, but I think the intended use is still like this. So just something to note, and I hope that that helps. Now let's also go over some new brushes that I recently picked up. So Hakahoto is having free shipping for the month of November. So I ordered some brushes from them. I have to say the shipping was like incredibly fast. It seriously came in like one or two days. So I ordered them and I also have some additional ones on order from Food Aid Japan. They were a little bit cheaper there and I was already placing an order for some things. So I ordered some from there, but it's with my pre-order. So it won't be here probably before the sale ends. So I wanted to make sure to get a few because this is my first foray into Hakahoto. So I wanted to kind of see what I thought about the shapes and the materials and so forth compared to Chikahoto, which is what I'm most familiar with. So I picked up a variety. This one here is the, I don't know what the number is. Um, I will look that up on my order and put that on here, but this is gonna be a squirrel and goat mix. And I have to say it is incredibly soft. I love the texture of it. It is fantastic for using for bronzer or cheek products. You know, I think this is a really fantastic brush and I'm very happy I picked this one up. So this is a definite winner. And let's look at just a few shapes that kind of compare. This is the Kyoto Akabeko brush, which you can see has a larger brush head. And here's the flex on them. You can see that the Akabeko is a little bit fluffier, partly because it's larger overall, so it has longer hairs. And yeah, I mean, both very nice. Surprisingly, um, you know, they feel just as soft, even though this one is squirrel and this is squirrel mixed with goat. And then this is the Sonuji Face Pro, which I just picked up during the Beautylish sale. I haven't actually used this one yet, um, but you can see that it is going to be larger overall. It's fluffier and it's a little bit longer as well. So definitely a larger brush, but you can see the flex and everything. There's a little bit more snapback with the Sonia G, which is gonna be goat compared to this one, which is a mix. So this one's gonna be a little bit softer and not quite as, not quite as dense. Moving on, this is a little unique brush. I just wanted to pick this up for the handle. I've seen some people post pictures of these on Instagram. I have to say, I thought it was bigger. <laughs> it's actually a very tiny brush. There is a little loop so you can hang this, but I think it's actually really cute. So this is fairly, um, you know, it it's actually feels fairly densely packed. You know, it's very tightly wrapped here, um, but you know, it's, still gonna it's gonna be really nice for kind of buffing out a blush because it is dense it's not going to perform like a soft and fluffy brush so if you are using like a pigmented blush i would tap it on and then wipe off your brush on your cloth and then 
just kind of buff it out with this. And I, that's what this is really good for, in my opinion, is buffing. Um, so I, I like this. It'll give you a soft buff compared to something like the Smooth Buffer or the former face one. What is it? The Buffer Pro now from Sonia G. Um, but for blush, I think that's perfect. So let me just show you a size comparison. I don't have a head that's exactly the same as this that kind of fans out so much and still is dense. So just for size, this is the Sonia G Classic Cheek, which is one of my favorites. And you can see that the fibers here are a little bit longer on the Hakuhodo. And the diameter here of the Classic Cheek is bigger. This is actually an oval versus round. But even so, this seems a little bit more dense and it just, it doesn't splay out quite as much. Both of them are, are good at pretty much the same thing, but this is gonna have just a little bit more buffing action just because this these core hairs here actually seem to stay really tight in there. Um, they don't move quite as much here in the center. So I think that really helps with that. Whereas these kind of seem to be a little bit more consistent all over the brush head in their movement. Next, I picked up a bunch of the J series eye brushes. And let's start off with these because these three are all more of like a crease shape. So this larger one here, this is the J5533. And you can see we've got a round ferrule here. And again, this is gonna be a little bit stiff. Then we have the B142. I was thinking they were all J. Sorry, we have a B. Uh, so B142. You can see that this one is a little bit flatter on top, whereas this one's going to be a little bit more tapered in the B series. Um, and it, it just, the, the actual hairs here taper up, whereas these remain a little bit flatter. And then this last one here is the J5529, which has a slight taper, but not as much. So the amount of taper is kind of in between these two. So here are these. Now, I like these brushes, but I have to say they do, just like this blush brush, they kind of just, um, they don't fan out as much when you're using it. So if you want to use a crease brush and you're really trying to concentrate color in a particular area and then have a soft buff around it, these are really good for that. But if you want like a fluffy crease brush that really kind of moves and diffuses the product uh, from the beginning, these don't really do that because they're not fluffy enough. You can see how much stiffer they kind of are. So even though I have brushes that are similar shapes, these kind of keep this more compressed shape more upon use. And I have washed and used these several times already. So this is, these are, these are freshly washed right now, but what I'm saying is even after washing um, multiple times, they still kind of remain with that like stiffness. So it's definitely something that's going to have a place in somebody's makeup regime, but if you're comparing it to something like a ref or crease brush, this is gonna have a lot more movement. This is a 16 or perhaps something like a Sonia G these are all going to be a little bit fluffier and you can see that these bloom a bit more as well. And I mean, I would have expected these to have bloomed by now to their pretty much full potential. So I think that's pretty much it. You can see that the J5533 is a little bit fluffier, but even so, like, I don't want to get this dirty. So you can see that even so, like if you want to splay it, you have to kind of like push it. But if you're working in the crease, it's still going to kind of stay in the center area for the most part. So it'll give you more of a softer buff around the edges and concentrate the color more in the center, if that makes sense. Moving on, we have the J5523, very, very popular brush, and the B004G. So this one here is more of your soft shader style. You can see it doesn't have a ton of flexibility. It's really great with metallics and satins, works very well with cream shadows as well. I think it's a great versatile brush. And because it does have that thin shape and it doesn't have a ton of flexibility, 
that's what's going to allow it to work so well with some of those particular formulas without getting a lot of fallout. We also have a thin enough edge here that you can use this to line under the eyes and things like that. So I think this is a really great, useful brush. And let's look at a few. So just a few comparisons. This one's dirty, sorry, I used this today, but this is the Sonia G Worker Pro. You can see that this one is going to have a more, it's gonna have more gradation of the lengths on the edges. So it's gonna be a little bit pointier. We both have about the same depth at the top, but because this is gonna be longer, it has a little bit more movement than this one, which makes lining eyes easier with the Hakahoto compared to the Worker Pro. Um, but they both work very well. And you can see that we actually have a thicker base here compared to this. So this is gonna be a little bit fluffier, which again, if you're painting something on your eyes essentially with a liquid or a cream, I find this one to be a little bit more useful. This is the Sonia G Soft Shader, my most used eye brush. You can see that this is definitely gonna be fluffier. The shape is very similar. You can see that the soft shader is slightly larger, um, but not much. By the way, handle size, this is, Hakahoto is just slightly shorter here. And yeah, so I think it depends what you're going for. But again, I really think the Hakahoto is better for creams and liquids. And then we have the Lotus Set Brush. This is the Builder. And you can see the difference. The Hakahoto head is going to be longer and it's also not quite as thick. Um, you know, I think they're both very, they're both very good at applying creams and liquids, but one of the things that's different, if you're looking at from the side, the Sonia G, our fibers, our hairs, actually start getting longer about here, whereas this really only starts tapering about here. So I actually prefer the Hakahoto. And last up, we have the Hakahoto J5523. And this is a fantastic, very versatile brush. Here it is compared to the soft shader. You can see that it's gonna be longer. The soft shader's a little bit thicker, um, but they do have a very similar shape. It's just really mostly the length that changes. And you know, that makes this one just slightly more versatile in the fact that you could also use this in the crease and everything as well. This works great for liquids, creams, powders. Um, I think it's probably the most versatile eyeshadow brush out of the ones that I picked up. Just a few other comparisons here. This is the uh, Sonia G Worker 3, and this is the Worker from the Lotus set. And you can see here that it's kind of in between these two. We've got pretty much the same shape as the Worker 3, which is almost the same shape as the Worker, but you can see that the curvature on the ends is just slightly different, but it could be a batch issue as well. And then um, lengthwise, our Hakahoto is just a little bit longer than the Worker 3. It's about the same length as the Worker, but it's more narrow and uh, again, it tapers slightly more on the edges. So those are gonna be your differences. Again, really great brush if you're looking to try some Hakahoto brushes. So overall, I'm happy with the Hakahoto ones I picked up, but if I were to, to pick just my three favorites, it would be this one here, the J5523, and the B004G. So those are my favorites out of the ones I've picked up so far. And let's move on to our next topic. All right, next we have some lipstick comparisons. So first, this is the Givenchy La Rouge Sheer Velvet in 16. We're gonna put that one right here. And then we're also going to take a look at the Rose Boise in the deep velvet number 14 and see how different those are from each other but we're going to compare these to the lisa eldridge blush and blush lightly so here's blush let me put that actually over a little bit more um so you can see it with the rose bras and this one here is blush lightly 
So you can see that the Lisa Eldridge are definitely going to be more uh, pigmented than this sheer, but the sheer is also going to be a little bit, it's a little bit more nude. There's a touch more brown in it. And yeah, I think that's going to be your biggest difference with blush lightly. Rose Boise is going to be much more plum than either of those. And another comparison, this is the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet in 10 Beige New, which is one of my absolute favorites. It's kind of like a peachy pink nude. And we're going to look at Lisa Eldridge in Intrigue, which is going to go right here. You can see that Intrigue is peachier. It's almost like a peachy mauve kind of shade kind of interesting. So you can see that's going to be peachier than beige new. And then this one here is fawn, which is going to be more brown. So the beige new from Givenchy is just going to be a little bit pinker, a little bit cooler in tone than the others. Next, let's move on to a new product. I've been trying out the Cure Weiss mascara. Now, Cure Weiss just came out with a new mascara. It's called Impossible or I'm Possible. I'm not sure which way it's intended to be said, but this is the first organic mascara that I'm aware of. So at least that's how they are advertising it. So it's a clean beauty organic mascara, and this is the wand here. And I'm going to go ahead and share with you the little demo of this so you can kind of see how this works in action. I have it on my lashes and then I'll share with you my thoughts. All right, so we're going to try out the new Cure Weiss Impossible Mascara. And you can see that it does come sealed in this box. Although you can just kind of lift it open. So I'm not sure why they decided to tape it like that. Uh, this is a metal tube here and you've got the cure weiss here. So this part's flat. The rest of it is round. So it's nice that it won't roll. This is seven milliliters, has a six month shelf life and it's refillable. So let's take a look. Here's the wand. If you can see it goes. All right, so we got one layer here. See the difference between the lashes? I think that's pretty easy to see. Right, let's go in with the second layer. The first layer wasn't too clumpy. The second layer, you know, I like mine completely defined and separated. So that little section there is bothering me, but look at the amount of volume and lengthening that you get with that. It's actually really good. All right, so one lash done. I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Okay, and just for reference, we've got one coat versus two coats. So I do think there's a big difference between one versus two coats. All right, we're gonna take a little bit and put some on the lower lashes. Oops, I made a mess. All right, so here is the mascara on the upper and lower lashes. And here's the Cure Weiss mascara. All right, so this mascara comes in this red box. It has a six month shelf life. It's made in Italy. And this is 0.23 ounces or seven milliliters and it's refillable. So this 
packaging here is metal mascaras organic i've tried quite a few of the clean beauty mascaras that are out on the market and i have to say that this one and probably the jones road those are my two favorites the jones road gives you massive volume it's a drier formula it's also a huge huge tube so it always dries up on me before i actually can finish all of that product which is fine, you know, for the price point, it's actually a very good value anyway. But this mascara, you know, again, you can get refills for this, which I think is great. This one is gonna have a wetter formula and this is volumizing. You could see the volume in there. Now it's a little bit wetter of a formula than I would like, but a lot of times those wetter formulas, they take longer to dry and then I smudge and so forth. That's not really, the problem with this one this one feels wetter going on and you can see that it's wetter going on as well but it actually dries very quickly so i don't i don't really mind it um i have not had any issues with flaking or smudging or anything under the eyes it removes very well i've been wearing this for about two weeks and I have to say that I like it. Do I like it more than my non-clean beauty mascaras that are my favorites, like the Surat Noir Lash Tint or the Sisley So Stretch? No, I still prefer those. But if I was looking for a clean beauty option, I would definitely check out this or the Jones Road Mascara. And you know, I have to say I do really like this. So I will keep this container and I may end up picking up a refill in the future. It's not my favorite mascara, but it's definitely one that I like. So I would repurchase it. All right, now we've got a blush comparison. We're gonna look at the coral shade here. This is the Tom Ford Explicit Flush. So we're gonna take a look at the coral here with the Sisley Vita Blush Coral Shade, which is like my favorite formula. <laughs> so. The Sisley Coral is going to be a little bit pinker than the one in the Tom Ford. The Tom Ford has more orange in it or more peach. But you can see here, um, you know, they're close but not the same. Finish-wise or formula-wise, the Tom Ford is going to be more powdery. The Sisley one is a little bit more of a creamier powder. So for application, if I want to go lighter with a Tom Ford, I'd recommend a fluffier brush to get a lighter application. Whereas with the Sisley, I actually recommend just getting like a dense buffing brush, tap on a little bit and buff that out to get, to kind of like disperse it. And that's because of the formula difference. Since this one's creamier, I find that's a better application method with these blushes. And I prefer to use a denser brush with these, but with the Tom Ford, I prefer a looser brush. All right, so I apologize for background noise. I, I don't know what's going on outside, but we've got um, the Viseart Peridot palette and we're gonna take a look at these. I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch all four of these shades. And we're going to compare them to some of the Byredo palettes. So this is Corporate Colors. We're going to take a look at the green here. This is actually a very deep green. I'm just going to put this one down here at the bottom. You can see this obviously has more gray. It's a really deep, deep green. We also have this green here in Psyomancer. And I love the formula of this green. Look at that satin shiny finish. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one right here. You can see it's gonna be brighter than the green in Peridot. Um, you know, it's a little bit more, it's not just brighter, there's a little bit less blue in there, but very, very gorgeous. And then this is the Siren palette, and we're gonna take a look at this. This is really more of a yellow green, and it's gonna be a little bit more yellow than the one in Peridot, but you can see that you know, they're similar in color. Byredo is gonna be more intense and a bit more yellow. But that's how those compare. Next, we're going to do a comparison with the Victoria Beckham uh, Lid Luster in Mink. And this, I love this shade. So it's like a brownish gray. Let's put this, we'll put this one on my hand here. So look at when you build it up, you can see how it actually looks kind of 
silvery gray, but then when you brush it out, you get brown. So I absolutely love mink. I think it's my favorite of the lid lusters. I think it's unique. I absolutely love it. Now for comparisons, we're gonna take a look at the Chantecai Luminescent Eye Shade in Elephant. This is my favorite luminescent eye shade as well. You can see it's gonna be softer in color and it's gonna be a little bit more brown overall. Um, you know, it doesn't look quite as silvery, but this is really more of a brownish taupe shade. I really love both of these. I don't find them to be that similar personally, but they're also one of my favorite colors. Um, so, you know, I think they're, they're different enough to have both personally. Next, the mermaid eyeshadows from um, Chantecaille. This one here is Triton, which you can see it has the same idea where it kind of fades out to a little bit of brownish, but, and you've got kind of more of that silvery look when it's built up, but it's way, way lighter than the Victoria Beckham. And this is the Eye Matte in Olivia which is gonna be, again, it's a little grayer built up, but it has that brown base as well. Very different though from this. Unfortunately, um, the other shade, I think it was the copper shade that was requested, I don't have that one. So these are the ones I do have. While we're swatching though, let's take a look at this Hourglass. Um, this is a shade Vivid. So just wanted to see how that compares, but no, doesn't really go with Peridot at all. Um, but really beautiful shade on its own. All right, well, it's definitely getting louder and louder outside, but thankfully I am through with my updates. There are any requests for the next one, let me know and I'd be happy to accommodate. And I hope this was helpful. So if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll see you very soon. So have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.